The clear contrast of the high standards of living and employment opportunities outside of Africa have continuously led the continent's top brains to export their talents, something that has characterized the job market here. But now, the reverse of brain drain seems to be taking place. One the major factor, of course, was the global crisis and what happened to uh, all these big companies uh, in the diaspora. For example, I'd say Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, especially in the financial industry, which are not de generating any more business. So their wallet was basically shrinking and they were cutting back on, uh, on employment as well as laying, off, uh, laying people uh, off. So when one thought, and I speak for personal experience, where you're laid off, you don't know what's really going to happen next. And as, as everyone knows, the best place is always home. Besides employment creation decelerating by 67.7%, from 74,000 new jobs in 2007 to 24,000 new jobs in 2008, and employment figures declining from 490,000 to 460,000 between 2007 and 2008 respectively, internationally trained African professionals are streaming in back home to seek employment opportunities and develop their careers. I mean, it's a really interesting global phenomenon, right? I mean, you know, countries all over the world exported their human capital and remittances are the clearest way to model what has happened. You know, remittances into Africa last year reached about $74 billion. It's bigger than foreign aid. It's a relatively recent phenomenon in the last 10 years. And it's, an in, you know, somewhere like Kenya, I reckon, in 2007, 2008, $1.3 billion was sent home, which is a fantastic number, and it's proof of how many people are abroad if you work backwards. I believe the reason that has picked up as a trend is because um, the distance, uh, geographical distance, has ceased to be a major obstacle in sourcing talent. For example, I have um, colleagues in industry uh, here in Kenya who um, they work with their colleagues around the world um, they work for the same organization, they're on the same team, uh, and they don't uh, have to be physically uh, in the same place. So that allows a company based in Kenya um, to source from anywhere in the world, uh, providing the candidate meets uh, the requirements for the job. As the global economy shows signs of strain, multinationals such as Coca-Cola, Kenya Commercial Bank, Understand Young and Lafarge are headhunting for Africans working in the diaspora with competitive remuneration while giving them a chance to take part in rebuilding their home economies. On the local employment scene, we are seeing that it is faster and easier for employers to identify staff because we have a wider range of employees to look at because of the kind of skills that they've developed out of the country, the international exposure that they have as well. There's also an increased need for preparation of executive CVs and this is one of the ways that you can get an, a prospective employer actually inviting you for an interview. Now we're getting a lot of people coming back looking for opportunities here and I think in the medium term this is a really positive step for Africa and you will see this happen across the continent. And if I might say why, the reason is people who are ready to emigrate somewhere for a better life, for a better job are people who are typically very entrepreneurial. You know, they, they, are, they are not prepared to sit and wait for something to happen. They make things happen. So I think you're going to find with the return of these people, it's going to be a very dynamic uh, uh, development in the medium term. Near term, we've got to find them a lot of jobs. The estimate is that there are about 9,000 uh, coming through the airport every month. Given these developments, the question that arises is on the level of expertise of the local talent pool and how their competitiveness matches that of their internationally trained counterparts. If you're here in Kenya, you have your, you know, your top local universities, uh, which very uh, many people compete for. And if you don't get a spot, then you don't get a chance to go to university. Whereas overseas, there's nobody who fails to get a university or a college degree uh, if they want to, or if uh, they have um, the motivation to do so. So I would say, broadly speaking, uh, variety, choice, options are much uh, greater overseas. The local employment scene waits with bated breath to see the impact the return of these professionals is going to have on the labor market in Kenya. I don't really think they are coming, a lot of them are actually coming to compete for jobs. They are act actually coming to create uh, kind of new openings uh, in companies because of 
some of my friends that I know uh, actually came and a new, a, a new unit or a new position was actually created because of the skill sets that they were bringing. So it's not something that was already in the market. Yes, uh, the people coming from out there may have uh, an advantage going, uh, going forward, but don't forget that these people went into markets that are already developed. They, they, they're, not, they're not going to the market when it was developing. So they do have that challenge of dealing with the developing situation. But once they get ahead where they have those, those skills that are needed when the market has developed, I believe uh, the local uh, professionals would have caught up by then. As global economies come under pressure, the continent seems to hold potential for those in the diaspora. And for many, this means the continent is on the right track.